Are we good? Okay, guys. Uh, nice to see you this morning. Uh, I'm Andy Young. I'm from Aspotas. Uh, this is Kai Wang. He's from Intel. And we've got a great presentation today for you on signal integrity for immersion. Uh, interesting uh, topic. You know, initially, the focus has been on materials compatibility, what happens to the hardware when it goes into the, in, the immersion environment. Uh, some great work being done there. I believe there's a work session focused on that. Um, and then uh, next up is thermal performance. Uh, what does the cooling environment do in terms of thermal performance for all of the components, critical and minor components in immersion? Uh, but recently, and I think due to the increase in the data rates of communication in IT generally, it's become apparent that there's also an impact on signal integrity, and that's what we're talking about today. So without further ado, I'd like to begin the presentation. Okay, so we're going to uh, talk today uh, and focus on what are the key dielectric and electrical properties for immersion fluids. Um, so what do we have to measure? What, what is different between air and liquid in terms of the electromagnetic fields and how they pass and interact with the medium? Um, how does the immersion environment and operating conditions of that immersion environment affect those properties, such as through temperature or frequency? Um, and also, what can you expect to see happen when you immerse a uh, design for air components in liquid? What happens? Why does performance change? And what, importantly, what can you do about it to bring it back into spec? And we're going to talk today a lot about testing methodologies. Maybe next time around, next year, we'll talk about some simulation methodologies. But we started with physical testing because that's sure and real. And um, in some cases, there were some benefits from immersion that we may be able to leverage. And also, there were some methodologies that we have come up with already in the work group to tune back performance into spec. Um, so quite a rich topic. Um, it sounds complicated, but actually, it's not so complex once you get over the, uh, uh, the initial learning curve. Yeah, there are two uh, important aspects for the signal integrity in immersion. Why we studied first is uh, the fluid dielectric constant. Its uh, dielectric property is a dielectric constant epsilon r from 1.8 to 2.2. This is a range has uh, uh, you s uh, most of us say the 13 fluid that reach uh, carried from Seattle. Those are the dielectric range the signal integrity people has to support. Uh, those uh, dielectric, the epsilon r changes the high speed uh, I/O exposed interconnect electromagnetic behavior. The second important thing is uh, it also provides the benefit. What benefit it is? It's a uh, environment benefit. Basically, less uh, temperature, cooler temperature, uh, the less humidity and the less vibration. Those are benefit to signal integrity. The group, our group member, the work stream group member, uh, actively. Uh, you see those component level tests, also the uh, system level tests. Here we have the socket test under the immersion. Uh, we have this uh, uh, conductor test, this uh, uh, connector test within the tank. And this two page is uh, also the cable, cable connector test. We know the most impact uh, for signal integrity is the uh, liquid contact to the exposed copper uh, to the exposed uh, fiber uh, optics, so the uh, the component level is important for test. Now we talk about the, the dielectric property of the fluid. This is a fundamental. Uh, why 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 is it different than the than the air cooling? Uh, to understudy, we have measured uh, many of those uh, uh, fluid. That there are two type of fluid. First is the hydrocarbon, the oil. Uh, for single-phase fluids, their, uh, their dielectric constant is range about 2.0 to 2.2. Uh, the, those are measured data, uh, measured data from the frequency domain, also from the time domain, frequency domain and time domain measured data. Uh, it, it's their uh, performance uh, frequent, frequent domain is over the uh, large range of frequency. Actually, this is good for the uh, signal integrity because we don't have a frequency dependence behavior. We can treat as a relatively flat frequency. This is uh, important for us to design. Second is it's not changing uh, 
at least for now, the study we did, is not changing with the temperature, which is also good since uh, the tank from operate from 20 to 50 degree, we do not see a change of the behavior, the important behavior of the fluid. Um, the third thing is we also did not find it's a, uh, the property changes when the, uh, when the fluid become a more used. For example, from zero months to 24 months uh, and so on. Uh, after the, uh, the fluid oxidation, after the uh, contamination, we did not find a direct property change. So even so now we, ch we know it's directly changes, but it's also a good behavior. It's, it's relatively stable without a degradation over the temperature and over the time. Now is uh, uh, the more detailed uh, study those channels, the data center channel. Uh, we can see from the uh, from the CPU to the uh, device. We we did the TDR study, um, uh, also S parameter study. Uh, the, this this two picture shows the fi fundamentally why the uh, why there's a difference for the immersion cooling and the air cooling. We see the uh, you see the bandwidth the. In the air, it's not E to R is one, and then with uh, uh, E to R one point eight, one point nine uh, liquid, and then with uh, oil liquid with E to R two point one, we see the bandwidth start to reduce, start to reduce. Uh, this is uh, one example shows why the, uh, why we have a, a potential SI concern because it, the higher dielectric do change the behavior. To, to take a look at the detail the, of the time domain channel, we also see the exposed con connector. For example, cable con connector, the cable connector and the socket has a change. Socket is actually benefit from the uh, immersion cooling and the cable connector, we have a, a, a more discontinuity. That's the reason we need a, a, a help from the cable connector industry, the interconnect industry. Uh, this shows the active member uh, working uh, heavily on the uh, component level uh, testing. Uh, the on the left is a, a, a Foxconn interconnect to test uh, their uh, 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 connector and in the immersion uh, debug tank. The right one is our member to test the, the MCIO cable. It's a you see the in the booth, uh, almost everybody use a, a PCIe cable. Uh, this is one test to show is I can actually pass the PCIe 5 uh, spec. So basically we can pass in the same in the immersion as in the air. Now we talk about the immersion benefit. It's not only the uh, dielectric constant impact us, we also have the benefit. W w what is benefit? First is a stable temperature. The liquid it's like a sea. You have hardly to change the temperature. So we have a more stable temperature than in the, in the air. For example, the, in the tank, we could range, operating range from 25 to 50, uh, but in the air cooling, it could easily change from 20 to 95. This is more stable, good for signal integrity, good for, for the silicon circuit behavior. Second is a uh, uh, more dynamic range. Also, a benefit is uh, a, all our high speed IO need, need the, uh, basically the equalization tuning. Uh, for stable temperature, we don't have the uh, temperature drift effect. So we, we will never have, we will let have less train code about the uh, run hot issue. So we trained and run at basically the same temperature, which is good for our equalization circuit. The PCB loss improves, has less loss. Uh, the package loss also has less, less improve the, the loss because both PCB and package almost uh, the conductivity of the copper uh, almost linear to the temperature. So we have less temperature with a better behavior. Also everybody in the everybody in the data center benefit from the temperature, lower temperature uh, because uh, you see the device DDR, the SSD and the Ethernet all benefit, uh, benefit from the uh, a, a cooler. Everybody can benefit. Uh, also, we would like to say there's also reduced humidity, humidity, uh, vibration, and the dust. So whether data center is in uh, India, Malaysia, uh, China, or North Europe, it can operate uh, like the same stable uh, environment, which is good for the um, uh, data center. Now we talk about the one example of what is actually uh, actually margin, what is actually function in the in the tank. This is a, 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 a one of our test example. We publish uh, work with o, or publish to uh, OCP. Also uh, work with the work stream. 
Uh, first is a DDR. DDR speed, we test uh, all the, uh, the latest DDR5 speed. Uh, we did not find the difference, significant difference between the, in the air and in the immersion environment. You see less than 2% eye diagram difference. Uh, we also test the uh, long term. So in the time zero, we compare also after two years. It's still operating with also margin to see what's the difference, performance difference. No change, basically no change. Uh, PCIe 5, uh, UPI, for, uh, PCIe, the, the latest PCIe speed, we also find the similar I, and no change after 24 months. It's important for Ethernet, uh, because Ethernet is to scale out the signal out of tank to interconnect the AI server. We did not find its difference. Uh, it's also passed the signal tech test and I spec test, no packet loss. This test is on the 56.4 per lane. We are actually uh, testing more of the 800 giga uh, modular. So optics, we have um, one session focused on optics. Basically the conclusion is we need to the sale optics to uh, be able to work. Uh, Currently, optics uh, shows uh, past uh, the time zero test. We will need to work on the uh, long-term reliability. I got one. I've got one as well, Kai. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, that's a lot of uh, real great insight and technical detail. Um, we're going to take that work that we've uh, done, which has been offered by the community um, and shared across a range of different components, and we're not going to take those methodologies and apply them to a common platform. It made perfect sense to pick a common platform which is uh, from within OCP, the OpenAI open AI platform that uh, John B. mentioned earlier at the start of this uh, session is the one that we've picked for very good reasons, because it really does capture the zeitgeist of the challenges in signal integrity for immersion for AI in particular. Uh, the plan is to pool all of our collective knowledge and expertise together and focus on the impedance budget of the baseboard and the modules and to discover how we can mitigate any performance decrement caused by immersion uh, by either design change or by some form of compensation uh, perhaps to replace an interconnect. An interesting thing that Kai mentioned a few seconds ago was around you can see a performance improvement, a reduction in, in impedance, and that sounds like it's a good thing, and it is generally, but until we're designing hardware for immersion specifically, a change in impedance means that things get out of time, things get out of sync, and that compensation, that um, adding impedance to compensate for impedance reduction due to immersion is the way that we're, we're going to approach this problem. Shout out to a few of the uh, Signal Integrity uh, Workstream member and companies that they represent for stepping up and taking part in this focus group, and I'm sure that we'll see more people uh, join as we go forwards. Just to illustrate the type of challenge that we have, uh, you can see on the screen now uh, an example of the range of different interconnects and equipment, such as the cables that Kai's been talking about and the sockets that you get at the interfaces between them. Um, it looks overwhelming and bewildering. Maybe it won't look like that on the right, uh, that image of tanks, of uh, racks. Maybe uh, for tanks it will look differently, but it just gives you some idea of the scale of the challenge. But because we've now got a component-based approach where we, uh, we follow the signal path and look at the impedance along it, uh, we're confident that we've got a way of solving this problem. Uh, this is a, a diagram uh, we are uh, working as a work stream uh, aligned to the uh, OCP spec, the OAI, OAM, UBB spec. Those three spec are the uh, OCP, AI, AI, AI world machine learning uh, spec. So we can see the, uh, the CPU node and GPU node as a diagram. In the GPU node, there are uh, eight uh, OAM, each one has a GPU uh, accelerator on it. So immersion, we are facing those uh, uh, challenge and working to uh, find, what, working to uh, verify the solution, uh, verify the performance, uh, which include uh, uh, our focus uh, 112 gig pound four on active testing, on the uh, passive testing. Uh, currently the uh, simulation shows a po very positive uh, data. Uh, we also need to test the different uh, interconnect. Example, the EXE Max ARK. Example, the, uh, the PCI switch, the, uh, the Ethernet switch performance. Oh, 
uh, oh, the device interoperability uh, by design by test. So uh, we want to limit the design uh, to use exposed conductors, uh, less conductor topology. So we have less chance the liquid a contact the copper is better for the topology. We also Im need to improve the impedance design to so make sure that the uh, palm, source, sig palm 4 signaling is coming to beside Gen 6 and the uh, Ethernet palm 4 uh, works both in air and liquid. Uh, we also could do the, is to reduce the total loss of the channel so we have more signal to noise ratio. Uh, we also encourage uh, the on dive uh, software me measurement to avoid the expense use con liquid contacts expense burden. So conclusion is basically it's a challenge for uh, signal integrity, but not a fundamental technology block. There's no block. We can we we are work we can work harder harder and work with the uh, uh, interconnect company to make that happen. Great. So. That's been hopefully an interesting presentation for you. Uh, lots to share, lots more to follow. There's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot that we couldn't share today, but hopefully that's been a coherent overview of how we've progressed. In how long is it now, Kai? It's probably six months we've been running this work stream for. So I hope you can see that there's a lot of progress been made in that short period of time, and we're really grateful for everybody to join in that work. Three takeaways really is that we have methods to identify the dielectric properties that are important. We know that the variation of those in immersion is favorable. Um, we have methods for testing coming through, and we'll follow up with methods for simulation as, as well in the next six months. And we've the third point is that we're aligning on the OpenAI AI platform to give us a common uh, project to apply these methods for something which is, as I said, in the zeitgeist of the industry. So, Kai, I think uh, you'd like to uh, make a shout out yeah. to particular people. We, we'd like to uh, uh, acknowledge the uh, work member individually and acknowledge the people contribute to the, uh, the measurement, the design, and test. Thank you. Thanks very much. We have one minute, so maybe one question, or if anyone's got a a comment they'd like to make, we'd love to hear from you. I guess your questions must be longer than one minute, so thanks for holding on to those questions. Um, and you can find us uh, towards the end of the, of, uh, the session. We'd love to talk to you about this topic. Thanks very much. All the best and goodbye.